Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. Today we got our fig cuttings in the mail, so I'm going to get these rooted this evening and I'll take you along on that journey coming up next. So the first thing we need to do when we get some new fig cuttings is to clean and disinfect. Well, first we need to unwrap the saran wrap here, but we're gonna clean these and then disinfect them with a 10% bleach solution. So these are the Ron de Bardot variety, and I've got three cuttings of this one. So I thought I would use these as um, the demonstration here. So we've got three nice looking fig cuttings. They don't look like they're too dried out. Um, after being in the mail for a couple weeks. So what we're gonna do, I've got this little, um, these are, this is a plastic bristle brush, but any kind of brush um, will do. You can even use a toothbrush if you want. But I'm just gonna give these a brush um, with some water. Okay, so that'll get them nice and clean. Get any dirt off that's on them. And then we're gonna do a disinfecting um, with a bleach solution. So some people use hydrogen peroxide and some people use bleach and I it seems pretty even um, but I decided to go with the bleach solution. So to get a 10% solution we're gonna add um, I'm just gonna make it easy by adding 10 cups of water. And this is warm water. And then we're gonna add one cup of bleach. And I'm just gonna swirl this around a little bit. All right, and then we're just gonna put the cuttings in there for about 30 seconds. And now I'm gonna use some tongs to get them out of here because I do not want my, my hands to smell like bleach. And I'm just gonna put them on this wire rack and I'm gonna let these dry before I move on to the next step. Now that the cuttings are nice and dry, we're going to go ahead and label these with a white paint marker. So I got this marker on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I'll put a link to it on the description of this video, but I already labeled the Ron de Bardot and I use the abbreviations RDB. And you want to use abbreviations if you can because you don't want to write a whole big long name on, on this. And also be sure to write the label on the top of the cutting because the bottom part is gonna go in the potting mix and we don't, we're not gonna be able to see it if it's in the potting mix. So to tell which is the top and which is the bottom, it's kinda of hard sometimes if, if there's a cut at both ends. Um, but the easy way to tell is look at the little nodes. There should be several nodes on the cutting and the bottom node is gonna be where the fig cut off at. So it'll look like, a, like somebody cut something off. And then the top of that will be a little bump, and that little bump is where the leaves are gonna come out. So you want the cut end on the bottom and the bump on the top. All right, um, so that's the RDB. So I'm gonna go ahead and label the Dalmatia, and I'm just gonna use DAL for the label. D-A-L, and we'll know what that means. And then Negroni, I'm just gonna use N E G and I got two of those cuttings so we'll do N E G again and I'm gonna go ahead and finish labeling all the cuttings and then I'll go on to the next step. Next we're gonna prepare our cuttings by cutting off both ends um, and be sure you use some clean pruners and disinfect them with some rubbing alcohol so I'm using a 99% alcohol. You don't have to use that high, um, but just put some alcohol on a cotton ball and just make sure you give it a nice clean to make sure it's nice and clean. All right. Um, so it sometimes can be difficult to know where to cut it. Um, I'm gonna show you one of the cuttings that I have back here of Tacoma Violet. You can see there's there's a ton of nodes on here and ideally you want at least one node underground and one node above ground. So this one we could actually cut into multiple cuttings and um, we, do, we don't need to 
to do this whole thing. So I'm thinking actually of cutting this one in half um, and we'll have about two nodes below ground and two above. So I'll do that with this one here. But the Ronde de Bordeaux, it looks like we've got, um, if, if there's a, if the end of the cutting is really close to a node, I'll just cut that off because we don't want to make a cut too close to the node. Um, so I'll probably go, we've got one, two, three, four nodes on this one. So I'll do two nodes below ground and two above. So I'll go ahead and make those cuts now. So you want to go fairly close to the node, but not super close. So I'll show you here, go about, about there should be good. And we want to make sure you've got nice clean pruners. So look, take a look at the color of the bottom of the cutting before I cut it. So that's pretty brown, which is not, not ideal. So that's probably not going to root if we tried to, tried to put that in the ground. But look at the, the fresh cut we just made. It's nice and green, um, nice and clear, kind of a whitish color. So that's the color you want. If you get brown in there, it's, it's pretty much dead. Um, you can try cutting up closer and closer to the top and see if you can find some, some green. But if it's brown all the way through, then that's not gonna, that's not gonna root. Okay, so we cut the bottom, and now we're gonna go ahead and cut the top. So the top is actually fairly close to the, the node, so I'm just gonna cut a really tiny amount off of the top. And that top is nice and green there, so we're good there. Um, so that's, that's all we need to do for that cutting. And we're going to do the same to these other ones. Now this one, this one's only got two nodes on it. So this is going to be a really short cutting. So this, this whole piece down here, there's no nodes on this whole piece. So we want to cut that off right here. So that's going to be the bottom. So we'll have one node on the bottom and we'll have one node at the top. So I'm just going to barely cut this one because it's really close to the node. All right, so hopefully that one will be okay, but that's, ideally I don't like it to be that, that close, um, but we gotta work with what we have, so that should be okay, so we'll see what happens there. And then here is the last one. So this one we've got, um, we've got this one that's really close to the bottom, so we're just gonna cut that one off, and then we'll have one, two, three, four nodes on this cutting. So we'll have these two on the bottom and we'll leave these two at the top. So we'll go ahead and cut the bottom. And then we'll cut the top. I'm just gonna cut just a little bit off the top. All right, and we're looking green on both ends. So that is good. So those are the Ron de Bordeaux's. Now the next step is going to be, um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Some people don't do this step, but I, I've decided um, to go ahead and do this. So we've got some, this is some grafting tape. People use this for grafting, but it's, it's a parafilm tape that I got on Amazon, and I'll put a link to that also on, on the description of the video. But what we want to do is wrap the top part of the cutting that's going to be um, above the ground. Um, so that the moisture, it basically keeps the moisture in and that way you don't have to put this in a humid area. So if you don't cover it, you need to keep the humidity up um, for the rooting to take place. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap, wrap this. I'm going to put probably about that much under the ground. So I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. And you want to stretch it a little bit as you're wrapping and actually sometimes you'll get it to break but because my house is kind of cold this isn't stretching as well as it should so I'm just gonna have to not stretch it as much and this will the the leaves will actually come right out of this tape surprisingly so it's really a thin parafilm um, and it'll come right out when it's ready. 
You want to get that top part covered. Some people dip the top part in wax, and I have done that before, um, but I don't really see a need for that if we're going to cover it with parafilm. So I'm going to not do that for these ones. And then we just tear it off. All right, so there's our first cutting, and then that one is going to be ready to go into some potting mix. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these wrapped up, and then I'll take you to the next step. Now let's talk about the medium that we're going to be using for the potting mix. So this is a blend that I made myself, and it's got about 50-50 cocoa core and peat moss. And then I also put in a, a pretty small bag of perlite and just mix that together. I added a little bit of water because it was super, super dry. Um, but you just want to rehydrate, especially the cocoa core that comes in a, just a dry brick. Um, so it takes a little while to get that rehydrated and then just mix it up really well. And then one more thing I'm going to be adding is some mycorrhiza. And I got this mycorrhiza on, on Amazon. can't remember how much it was, but I can put a link to that in the description. But this is an organic um, mycorrhiza, and it just helps with, with root development. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And the directions say to add one teaspoon per gallon. And I've got about probably three to four gallons of mix in here. So I'm just going to put a tablespoon in there. And then, so these are going to be a, like a granule. I've actually never used this stuff before. Um, but yeah, it looks kind of like sand. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in there and then mix it up really well. And this mix is a little bit drier than I'd like, so I'm going to go ahead and add some water to that as well. And you don't want this to be too wet. So the ideal um, moisture level for just about any kind of seed starting or rooting is to get it wet enough that when you take a clump of it and squeeze it, it should hold together without dripping liquid. So I'm squeezing that as hard as I can and there's no liquid coming out of there and it's staying in a ball when I squeeze it. So that's pretty close to what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this into our containers. I went ahead and filled up this, it's actually, a, it's either three and a half or four inch square pot um, filled that up with the, the potting mix. And this is one of the taller sized four inch pots. Um, so we want the taller ones because we need more room for the roots to grow. So sometimes I use these. Um, there's also what's called a tree pot, which is a really tall pot. I think this is, I think it's nine inches long, but if you have a really big fat cutting like this, that's really tall. Um, it's really great to have these tall pots and I'll post a link on where you can get those. Um, but this is a really good one for any really big cuttings. So that's the only one that I've got. That's one of the ones I potted up um, a few weeks ago, but these are pretty small cuttings. So I don't, we're not going to need to use that, um, but I might repot once these start rooting, I might repot these into those tree pots. So we're going to use this one for now. Um, another thing people use is these kind of plastic bags. These are actually um, gift bags. They're clear gift bags. And I'm, I think I'll go ahead and use that for the this taller one. But let's go ahead and do this one here first. And I've got my knife here because there's one more thing we need to do to these cuttings before we put them in the, the potting mix. So I'm just going to score some slits here on the side. Some people just do a slit like that and others scrape off. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with the scrape method. So I usually, I like to do two, a scrape on each side, but you want to make sure not to scrape the, the node there. You want to keep that intact. So just go on either side and just until you get to the I think it's called the cambium, labor, la cambium layer, so it's kind of a, a green color. So that should be good. And then one more thing we're going to do is I've got this rooting hormone. Um, they come in powders, and I've used the powder before, and I just got this Clonex um, gel, 
which seems to be used by a lot of fig growers. So I'm giving that a try for the fig cuttings. So what I like to do, some people stick their fig cuttings directly into the the Clonex, and I, I advise against that because there could be some kind of disease, bacteria, or whatever on the cuttings, and you don't want that getting in there. So what I like to do is just get a piece of wax paper or parchment paper and just put a little bit on there. That way you're not risking getting your whole thing infected with something. So do that, and then you want to do, you want to just coat the bottom part as well as the cut parts um, that you did in there. And these, this cut part is actually going to grow roots, so that's why you want to do that. All right, and then we want to just, I'm just going to poke a small hole in the container here and then stick our cutting in. I'm going to go, you don't want to go all the way down to the bottom, but I'm just going to go up until where we have that, that taped up. So that's all there is to it. So that's one of them. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you the bag method on the longer cutting. And the bag method, they call it the fig pot method. Um, and when, what you need to do is cut some holes in here. And actually, I like to cut the, just cut a slit off the corners. And this um, gives a little bit of air so that you don't get mold in your bag. So just put a couple holes throughout the bag. That should be good. And now we're just going to fill that up with the potting mix. Okay, so I went about, and you can fill it up depending on how long your cutting is. So this one isn't super long, so we're going to put it about that far down so you have that much space for the roots to grow. So again, we're going to go ahead and scrape the bottom of the cutting. All right, and then we got our, root, our rooting hormone. And we're just going to put that into the bag down to the wrapped part. All right. And these gift bags that I bought actually came with these little tie things. Some people use rubber bands, but I'm just going to use these, these twisty ties that came with the, the gift bags. So I'm just going to wrap that around, close it off, and then twist it off. Okay, so I'm just going to keep these in a warm, dark place. Um, if you put them in bright light, these will start to sprout. And I think it's best to keep them in the dark until they start rooting, because if, you, if they sprout before they have roots, then it's not going to be able to support the leaves. So you want it to focus on root development first. So I'm going to keep these in the dark, and we'll keep an eye on it and check for roots. Um, hopefully within a month or so we'll start seeing some roots and that's one benefit for using um, these bags is you can see the roots because this is a clear plastic bag but when, when it comes to this guy we're not going to be able to see when the roots start to develop unless we see them coming out the bottom so a lot of people use a clear um, cup as well because they could see the roots um, so I do like the fig pot method for that purpose um, just so you can see that the roots come out there. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my other cuttings and get these guys finished off. I'll be posting another update here in maybe a month or so once we start seeing some something going on. But that's all we have for today. I hope you try giving some fig cuttings a try or any other hardwood cutting. You can do the, the same way. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.